So again, I want to talk about a more advanced topic. I know this is a basics or a beginner intro to SOLIDWORKS 2016, but I also feel it's important that moving forward, you at least know some of the options that you have to create your geometry. Now, oftentimes I find that, especially new users, they'll get into a rut where they do one thing and they do it over and over again, and they never learn the power that SOLIDWORKS actually has to help them control their geometry. So in this video, I want to talk about equations, global variables, and link dimensions. Now these are all very, very handy tools, uh, things that you can use to help relate your geometry and really add a lot of parametric functionality to your designs. So let's start by opening up the SOLIDWORKS file, Equations and Variables. Now inside here there are two sketches, Sketch 1 and Sketch 2. The first thing we want to do is go into Sketch 1 and edit it. Now inside here we have two rectangles. Now the only thing that rectangles currently have is a horizontal relation with the origin. So this keeps us from moving this bottom line up or down, but everything else is free to float around. Now, when we've talked about relations and adding dimensions, there are obviously certain things that we can do. Now, let's say that we want to dimension this rectangle to be 75 by 75. Now, let's say that it always needs to be a square. Now, there's obviously things that we can do, like we can select this upper edge and this left edge and make them equal. That's a very powerful way that you can create your geometry without adding a bunch of different dimensions. Then we can do things like add a 75 millimeter dimension to one side. So we've achieved the same thing that we did on the left hand side by using two dimensions and on the right hand side by using one dimension and using that equal relation for these two edges. But there are other ways that we can approach this as well. And especially if you need to use dimensions or specific geometry over and over again. So the first thing I wanna talk about is linking dimensions. So inside of here, I'm gonna select one of these dimensions. In this case, I have the upper 75 millimeter dimension. I'm gonna right click on it. Now inside here, we have link values. I'm gonna select link values, and it wants me to give this a name. So I'm gonna call this square dim one and say, okay. So you notice that now it has a red chain link icon next to it. Now on the right hand side, if I right click on this one and say link values, it gives me the same dialog box. But from the drop down, I now have square dim one. I can say okay, and it changes. I can go over to this one, right click, link the value, select my option, and say okay. So what we've done now is we've linked all three of these. Now what this does for us is allows us to change one dimension and update everywhere that it's linked. So very handy, especially if you want to be able to control this dimension from multiple sketches or multiple different places. The downside is that you have the ability to update this and change it, and if you link it a bunch of different places, you might change it in certain instances that you don't want to. So it's very important to understand that when you're linking dimensions, that it's linked universally throughout the file. If you edit one, you're going to edit them all. So as we're looking at this file, let's also say that we wanted these rectangles to be the same distance away from the origin. Now we can do this a few ways. We can add construction lines. In this case, we could make these construction lines equal to each other. So now if I move one, they both move out. This gives me a great deal of flexibility because we haven't added any dimensions, we haven't really locked anything in. Now I'm a firm believer in the fact that you can use construction geometry and relations to do a whole lot in your files. You don't need to add a bunch of dimensions if they don't need to be there. Like that example on the left, we don't need a, this exact same dimension here and here, or even over here. We can delete this one, and we can make this line equal to this line and be done with it. This could actually be a mirror entity, but again, there's several different ways that we can approach this problem. Now let's say that we wanted to control this width. Again, we can add a dimension. We can link this dimension. For instance, if we say equals, so you'll notice that we have a global variables option. And inside here, we have the chain link icon, and it says square dim 100 millimeters. Again, we can link that, say OK. Now, you'll notice that it has a different icon next to it. These ones over here have the chain link icon. This one over here has an equation icon. Well, if we double click on this, it also has a different look here. It shows that it has a globe, and this is actually linked to what's called a global variable. Now we didn't create a global variable, but when we named the linked variable, it automatically created it for us. So even though we linked it to that same value, it looks a little bit different and it behaves a little bit different. So if I try to modify this value and rebuild it, you notice that it doesn't let me. Now I changed it to 150, everything moved, but as soon as I okayed it, it brought it back in line. Now linking to a global variable is a little bit more stable because you can only change it in one place, 
and you can't change it on the fly. If I change this one to 150, anything it's linked to will change. And even that global variable that we link to here is gonna change. So again, it's very important that we understand if you're gonna be using this functionality moving forward, that linking a variable here is different than linking it to a global variable. So now let's exit this sketch and move into sketch two. So I'm gonna hide sketch one, show sketch two, which is located on my top plane. We can go ahead and view normal. And let's take a look at equations. So under our tools menu, there's an equations option. So we'll select that and we'll drag this down so we can see it a little bit better. And there are a few different ways that we can view this. Now currently, it's on the left-hand view, which is the equation view. And inside here, you'll see that under global variables, we have square dim one, it equals 100. And inside here, we have the chain link icon. When we linked the dimension one at sketch one, which is square dim one, to a global variable, it created this global variable and you can see it's grayed out. We can't adjust it. It's completely fixed based on whatever this value is. But in the equation side of things, we can actually update that and change that. So a good way around this is to create our own global variables. So let's go in here and let's say square dim two. And let's say that this one equals 100. We say okay. So now I have squared M2, it equals 100 millimeters, and you see it evaluates to 100, but now it's in the global variables and it's able to be changed. Now this means that I can come in here, I can change this value, I can rebuild it. So let's say okay, and let's edit this sketch. So inside the sketch, I have this 100 millimeter dimension here. Now if I double click on it, it brings up my modify dialog box. Inside here, if I hit equals, I go into global variables, and you'll notice that I have two different options now squared M1 and squared M2. And you'll notice squared M2 has a globe icon next to it telling me it's a global variable. I say okay, exit this, and now it's linked to that value. So now if I double click it and I try to modify this to even be 105, you see it updates my sketch and it allows me to change that value on the fly. Whereas if I used the linked value, it didn't allow me to change that. There's one other thing that I wanna handle inside of the equations and that is actually creating an equation. So you see that this sketch has a few circles in it and it's got a rectangle in it. So we're gonna go back into our equations, which we can do from the folder in our tree by right-clicking and going to Manage Equations. And now I wanna create an actual equation. So inside here, I'm gonna create a global variable called whole dia. And that's the whole diameter that we're gonna to give to the four individual circles. I'm gonna say 25 millimeters. So now I wanna create a new variable and this is gonna be whole offset. Now inside here, I can use the power of creating my own equation and link it to other values. So for instance, I wanna take this whole diameter value and let's say that I wanna multiply it by two. So you can see that this evaluates to 50 millimeters. Now, of course, that may or may not work. We can always come back, we can modify it to 2.5, say okay. And you can see that it's updating these values on the fly. So now if we go back to our sketch, sketch two, we can come in, we can select all four of these holes. We can make them equal. So we're using the power of those relations. We can apply a dimension to one of them. We'll say equals our whole diameter. And then we can start adding dimensions to offset them from the sides. Now in this case, I'm gonna say equals global variable, whole offset. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the top. So you'll notice how far it's offsetting that hole. So if we wanna go back and change it, we can go back and manage our equations. And let's say that we actually wanna make this 1.5, say okay. We rebuild our sketch. And you see that it pulled that hole back in line. We'll go back into our equations. And let's say that we wanted to adjust the value of this. We can make that 175 and we can say okay. So now that we know that we can create these dimensions and these global variables and we can link it, moving forward to dimension the rest of this, a good way to do this is again, use construction geometry and relations. So I'm gonna create a line that's for construction, going from here to the side and here to the top. Now this line is vertical and horizontal. I'll do the same thing on the bottom and do the same thing on this side. So I can take these lines, make them equal, and then I can take these lines and make them equal. So now if I modify this value, it's gonna be offset the same amount from the bottom. There are other ways that we can approach this as well. I can take the center of this hole, the center of this hole, and make them horizontal. I can take the center of these holes, and again, make them horizontal. And that's a good way that we can line things up. And then we'd have to apply a single dimension up here, 
make it equal to our whole offset, and then take this hole and make it vertical. So now if we move this around, all the holes stay exactly where they should, and we could link this back to the origin and now have a fully defined sketch. There is a lot more functionality and flexibility built into equations, into global variables, and even into linked dimensions. So again, this is a more advanced topic, but I just wanted to make sure that you understand there's a lot of flexibility in ways that you can define your sketches and you can move forward with your designs. It's very common for me, especially when creating a very complex design, to go into my equation manager, make a bunch of values, and even save a template. It's often when I'm designing plastic parts, if I have a wall thickness, if I have a draft in mind, things like that, I put all those values into the equation manager as global variables, save my template as a part for a molded part template, let's say part millimeter molded. And that way, when I start a new part, I select that template, those values are in my equation manager, and I can go in and I can adjust them. Now that we've covered the basics of sketching, I want to talk about reference geometry. When you start creating your designs, most of the time you'll be able to use the standard front, top, and right plane. But there are plenty of times when you're going to have to create your own reference geometry. So I want to take a second to talk about how you can do that inside of SolidWorks. First, you want to open up the SolidWorks file, Reference Geometry. In here, we have two sketches, Sketch 1, Sketch 2, and we have an extruded surface. Now these will be used for references to learn how to create our reference geometry. From either your Features or your Surface tab, you want to navigate to Reference Geometry and expand the dropdown. Inside here, we have Plane, Axis, Coordinate System, Point, and Mate Reference. For now, we're only going to focus on Planes and Axes. We'll start by selecting Plane. The SOLIDWORKS Plane Creation Tool is very powerful and easy to use. You don't have to know what kind of plane you're creating to start with, you simply have to know what references you want to use. For instance, let's start by selecting the top plane. Now by default, it's going to try to offset the top plane, but there are other options here as well. We can make the plane parallel with some other reference geometry we can select, perpendicular to something, coincident with something, or even at an angle once we select a second reference. We have the available option to make multiple planes in one go at the same spacing. We can flip the offset, or we can make a midplane. Now these are all very handy options to create new geometry. But in most cases, just creating an offset of a plane probably isn't going to get you what you need. Because inside of features, once we get to that, you can offset from a base sketch without having to create a new plane. So what happens when you have some curved geometry or some off-angle geometry, and you need to create a plane to create some geometry for sweeps or lofts or other things like that? Well, let's start by going into reference geometry, create a new plane, and start by selecting the spline located in sketch one. Now, by default, when we select that, it's going to create a plane but the plane that it's creating is actually the same as the one it was sketched on. For our second reference, we're going to select the upper endpoint, and now what we get is a plane that's created that's perpendicular to the curvature of the spline at the end of it. Now this is great because now we can select this plane, we can start a new sketch, and we can do things like create geometry on it. So as we look at this, we can take the endpoint, and we can control select the spline, and we get a new type of reference that we can add, a pierce mate. So this now allows us to create a plane at the end of a curved spline, create our geometry, and do things like sweep along that path. But there's a lot more that we can do with it. Let's take a look at creating a plane based off sketch two. So I'm gonna hide sketch one and sketch four that was just created. Sketch two has a horizontal line and an off angle line. So we're going to select our top plane, go into our reference geometry, and create a new plane. For my second reference, I'm going to select this off-angle line. Now by default, it's going to try to create a plane based on that at 90 degrees. But we can also manipulate that angle if we want to, for instance, at 45 degrees. So we've taken our top plane as reference, and we've rotated about this axis 45 degrees. So this is a great way to use reference sketches, so sketches created only to reference something else, for instance making a plane, to create any geometry that we need. So now we have a nice off-angle plane, and we can do things like create geometry that intersects the cylinder. So if we go in to create a new sketch, we can use our Convert Entities dropdown, an intersection curve, and we can intersect with that geometry. So we've essentially made a nice parabola based on the cut of that cylinder. So again, using tools that we've already created and learned, using plane creation and convert entities and intersection curve option to create this geometry. Let's go ahead and hide sketch five and plane two and take a look at something else that reference geometry has to offer. 
Now inside here, we can create an axis. Now these are often very handy, especially when you need to do things like create a revolve axis, and you don't necessarily want to create it in a sketch. Now inside here, again, this is very powerful. We can start by referencing entities. For instance, if I select this cylinder, it's automatically gonna create an axis that goes between a cylindrical or conical face. But there's other things that we can do as well. So if we clear that selection, we can do things like select two planes. So we've got plane two we created and plane one. You'll notice that where they intersect, it's gonna create a yellow axis for us. So you can see here that we have a nice new axis based on plane two and plane one and where they intersect. So again, it's a very handy tool. Now, if you need an axis for something like this cylindrical part, even though it was created with a circle that's extruded, you can also go up to your hide show items and go down to temporary axes. This will automatically create a temporary axis that's based on any cylindrical or conical face. There's a lot more you can do as these are only very basic examples of how to create planes and how to create axes. But if you need that geometry, don't be afraid to come in here and play with the options and see what you can do. It's very easy to use and simply based off your selection.